Okay, Matthew, well, I'm now in the basement of uh, the Hymns floor and the somewhat, uh, the, 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 almost the low rent district, although I think Hymns actually charge the same amount. Okay, on my left here is Terry Conlon uh, from Aptus Health, and on my right is Michael Bodenstab, also from Aptus Health, but from the Med Help Group. So, uh, I'm going to start with you, Terry, because uh, most people know Aptus, uh, or don't know Aptus, because it's just changed its name. Mm -hmm. What did it change its name from, and why? Right. So, Aptus Health was formerly Physicians Interactive. Uh, we have evolved over the course of a 10 year period plus uh, from being focused on physicians to taking a much broader view and focusing both on consumers and physicians and serving a broad swath of the healthcare industry both in the US and globally. So we thought it was time, actually long past time, to rebrand the company and um, have a name that really would represent where we're heading in the future, which is to join different aspects of the healthcare constituencies and stakeholders together in the U.S. and globally. Um, we've grown by virtue of acquisition in a number of different ways over the years. Um, a couple of years ago, we acquired the MedHelp business. Last year, we acquired Quantia Incorporated. Um, MedHelp is on the physician side. Quantia, excuse me, MedHelp is on the patient side. Quantia is on the physician side. And really, the coming together with Aptis is to represent a focus on advancing health engagement and leveraging our years of experience working with life sciences companies and beginning to work with health systems and payers and employer groups to take our uh, expertise in individual health engagement and behavior change and leverage that not just with physicians but also with patients as well. Okay, so let's uh, dial down a bit. You mentioned some of them but you've done a number of acquisitions. Right. So what did right. Physician Interactive actually do? And then you've added, as you mentioned, Quantia, which is a, 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 what we call a physician's knowledge exchange but also mm -hmm. also a Univitas which is part of Merck. And talk a bit about right. the relationship with Merck overall because they are sure. a big share, if not majority. Sure. Like, I'm a total majority shareholder of Aptus. <laughs> yeah, so Physicians Interactive itself is uh, roughly 10 plus years old started off with very much a life sciences focus, exclusively a life sciences focus, and really um, beginning to uh, focus on what was then called interactive engagement with um, physicians on behalf of pharmaceutical and biotechnology companies, and evolved to um, be much more uh, digitally uh, savvy, much more digitally broad, uh, and not just reach out by email and so forth with clinical content and approaches to getting the attention and educating, creating disease state awareness for doctors. We're really evolving from that email view to more of a community, social, digital, more contemporary view that um, meets physicians in uh, more of an intellectual community that is very content driven and has a number of different ways mobily and um, you know by web that a physician can interact with us and engage with us. Um, so, so uh, Quantia obviously fits in there very well, which is a well-known uh, physician's community. Yes. I forget how many physicians are on board on Quantia, do you know? There are you know over 250,000 named and verified physicians on, in Quantia um, in the U.S. today, and there are over 3 million physicians worldwide as part of uh, as part of Univadis and also other types of providers involved So well. Univadis was uh, a separate company that Merck had that got folded into, yes. but now up to yes. So explain a little bit, what's the relationship with Merck overall? Right, so Merck is... Uh, Merck is one of our investors. The Merck Global Health Innovation Fund is one of the investors in uh, in Aptis Health, and so um, you know they are. We are a privately held um, subsidiary of Merck, um, and you know have. As, as is the case in many other examples in the industry, have them as our um, investors and they're part of our um, leadership board and governing board. We operate very much independently, serving a variety of different life sciences. You have other customers who are not Merck, is what you're trying yes, to say. Right. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so, let's, so that gives us a sense of that. We'll come back to talk right. about the future in a second. Sure. I'm going to talk to Michael. So Michael, uh, you were with MedHelp, uh, which is uh, quite two years ago, I believe it's part of that. Obviously, uh, sure. back in the day, John D'Souza, uh, uh, President MedHelp, um, still president of MedHelp, right? Sure. Doesn't go anywhere. Um, was one of the on the very first Health 2.0 panel, so we know very well. I, we actually have a slide we use now in doing me, me and our presentations, which has like, this is what MedHelp looked like in 2007. Look at them now, you know. So, give me a sense of what over the years MedHelp has added on the patient side, the patient and physician communication side, and what are the major products and services you're delivering right now. So when, when you think about 20 years ago, uh, MedHelp was starting out being focusing on patient or consumer engagement around 300 different conditions. Now 140 million people actually come to the site. 
and look at those conditions and see how others are coping. So then we take that knowledge and build condition-specific apps. So I'm expecting where you get 40% of women in the United States download and use that to monitor their pregnancy. And then sugar sense, we had over 140,000 people last year leverage that and come back on a monthly basis, 95 or 96% of the time, uh, those individuals are coming back um, and it's putting once a month their glucose information to man monitor the condition and become more self-aware. Now we've taken it to the next level, creating a platform where we can start we start pulling in apps, not just ours, but for where the health systems have. They have my charts, they have all these other ones that they're dealing with, pulled together to give a seamless experience for the consumer or patient so that they have one place to go from a mobile perspective to engage their payer or provider. Now, then we're starting to add nudges and identifying people of how they want to engage in their health, what's the best way, is it content, is it communication directly with a PCP or a health coach, and really driving that stickiness so that they come back on a regular basis and engage in their health in a meaningful way. So, you start off as essentially a community with a, a, a self-generated content site back to the, the early days, and you say 20 years ago, you got a big restart about, what, 15 years ago, um, and then uh, and then you've added that over the years, and we've seen obviously the health entrepreneur, the various platform pieces you've added on the, uh, and now you're saying, talking about building that as, a, as an engagement tool to be resold to health systems and people who care about you know, health risk. What is the sort of, there's a, there's a big step there between having a content site which is sort of independent of the main healthcare system to being a core tool, a platform used by healthcare systems to do that sort of mythical patient engagement stuff. Maybe not mythical, but um, give me a sense of the difficulties getting from one to the other and how has that journey been going for MedHelp? So when you, you think about it, it really has folded very well because Communities now have become pretty hot in terms of consumers coming in and asking questions. Um, and health systems are looking for a way to leverage that and what people are looking at. So we've actually transitioned nicely into that, but we've actually focused more on condition-specific areas, so like diabetes or women's health, and tailoring solutions around that. So some health systems that want to manage their 20,000 uh, diabetics that they have to deal with. Um, they're finding using our tools to use device integration along condition specific and a wrap around and nudging them in a way to be an easy way to manage those low and moderate level um, people with chronic conditions or multiple comorbidities. So it's come pretty well, but it's an education process on the health system side to say how you can do this and to iterate because there's no silver bullet out of the gate. You start someplace and then you expand over time. So in terms of uh, turning what you do into revenue, obviously the initial focus was on uh, to pharma advertise, uh, advertising and health, health direct to consumer advertising. Uh, what's the what's the share now in terms of you know becoming a service for health systems and others on the consumer side? So I would say you know right now we're probably half and half payer and license model and advertising, but soon we're going to migrate. I would say over the next year we'll have a much more from a pair of provider perspectives uh, in terms of license and growing the business that way. That's very interesting. So, uh, coming back to you, Terry, um, you, I nifty get your logo in the background to so do that, very clever. Um, now, so obviously you've got the, uh, you've got extensive activity in the sort of physician connectivity part, mostly around information, education, now community with Quantia and obviously University and others. You've got the same sort of thing, but with more connection and more sort of behavior change functioning on the consumer side. First off, what's the connection between those two pieces, sort of strategically and actually in real life? Is there, a, is there much connection yet between them, or are you starting to find right. products and services and customers who want to go between the two? Right. Well, I think the, the connection point is really around the patient and the ways in which um, the healthcare industry, regardless of who you are in that industry and what company you are, wants to, in a changing landscape, improve patient outcomes and actually improve the care that one receives, regardless of what that individual's care profile is. And so how do you best do that? You best do that by going to the patient and also by going to their care providers, whether that's their primary care provider, a specialty care provider, or the health system that they visit, you know, you really need to take a look at it. We are positioned to look at and also educate and reach patients and physicians 
uh, along that care pathway, whether it's having uh, services and tools that are embedded within an EMR or EHR system and suggest um, to a patient at the point of care with a provider that they receive a particular script and are eligible for a particular um, uh, first fill program. Uh, patient support program or whether it's educating the physicians on a broader basis around the condition of interest on behalf of the health system who's trying to reduce clinical variation and improve the quality of care and Aptis really is you know trying to and well positioned to leverage our expertise along those different uh, so you're, you're telling you're telling me I think that the, the Eventually, this is one sale to a health system yes, that you get the physician yes. side and, and it is because and it's a sale side. that's focused on how we create uh, better cost efficient outcomes for everyone involved, whether it's you by making good use of touch points with physicians in the care care process or in their own after hours self education process, or whether it's you know reaching a consumer or a patient at a, a different point in time in their cycle. And let me ask you a question, ask Michael, in terms of the share of revenue and yes. sort of business on the physician side, is it still mostly uh, uh, an advertising driven play or is there more of that uh, subscription revenue from uh, health systems and all that's coming in? Well, I think, you know, consistent with where the history of Physicians Interactive has been and, and so forth, the lion's share of our work today is with life sciences companies in the U.S. and globally. Um, we are shifting that and growing that. Um, as Michael and I um, can speak to, both of us are here today talking and meeting with health systems executives who are interested in patient engagement and physician engagement, and it's certainly an interest of our company to continue to build upon the depth that we have in life sciences, but also to use all that learning and leverage it into um, improving patient care um, through patient touch points and physician touch points as well. All right. And now, of course, the last question I'm going to ask you is, when does Merck want its money back? <laughs> I thought you were going to ask somebody else that question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll take that as a no comment. <laughs> I've been talking with Terry Condon uh, and Michael Bodenstadt from, from uh, Aptus Health. I will give you the, the one name now. Uh, I'll be back. Thanks, guys. Come a bit closer together so the shot has you. All right. All right. Thanks. Enjoy your time at Hims, guys, and uh, look forward to seeing you over the next uh, few months as this builds out. Thank you.